Today we are taking a look at Ableton and how it works. This is gonna be a three part series where I explain Ableton in increasingly depth. This first one is for beginners, then the second one is intermediate and the last one is expert. Now if this is your first time opening Ableton, congratulations, step one accomplished. You are now officially cooler than your neighbor who still makes music on their iPad. And you're officially in the same room as the amateurs, the professionals and that one guy on TikTok who made that K-pop banger out of a light switch. Alright, this is Ableton. This is your canvas. Think Bob Ross, but instead of happy little trees, it's happy little beats. Or, or just music in, in general. Let's take a look at Ableton, and first up, there's the browser. This is Ableton's library of instruments, sounds and effects. Here's how it's organized. These are your folders for instruments, MIDI effects, audio effects, samples and so on. And this is basically where you find all the stuff to make music with. I won't go into how the different effects work, but if you're interested in that, I can link in the corner up here to a video series I did on Ableton effects. To the point, very straightforward. This is called Places. It's where all of your imported stuff goes. For example, sound and instrument packs that Ableton gives you for free you can download here. And there's the user library, which you don't have to focus on right now. You have the ability to shortcut to any folder on your computer. If you have a sample library on your computer, a folder, you can just shortcut to it here. Collections, this is where your color-coded items go. I use it for effect types, but you can use it for anything you like. I made a video about Ableton's organizing system and how this works, among other things. If you're interested in that, click up here. Now, to find what you need, because it's a big library, you can just type kick, for example, and all of the kick pops up. Uh, yeah, and you can choose one. It's cool. Now you can drag that kick onto the main lane and play it and... Well, oh yeah, you're in business. Next, let's talk about the top bar, aka the control center of the door itself. Now, there's the transport control. I won't talk about everything here because there's too much and a lot of it doesn't really apply for beginners. Uh, or me, I, I use half of it, really. We'll take a look at the more advanced stuff in later videos. But the main thing is you have to start and the stop up here along with record and you can control start and stop with the spacebar. With this button or control L or command L if you're on Mac, you can turn on loop. You can adjust the loop position with these things or again, just select something and press control L. Now we're getting to the BPM section over here. Needless to say, this is where you choose your BPM, slow it down for lo-fi and crank it up for the drum and bass. To adjust, just click and drag up or down. If you have the rhythm in your body but don't really know what the BPM is, you can also tap it with this button. Just tap the rhythm you're feeling and Ableton will know what the rhythm is. And if you are musical fancy pantsy, you can choose your key signature up here and your time signature here. There's the metronome right there and you use that to stay in rhythm when you record stuff. If you click it, you can choose the sound of the metronome, the rhythm or the count in time you get before the recording starts. And if you need to adjust the click volume, you can do it down here. Now we got that covered. Welcome to the main lane. Before this video, I didn't know it was called the main lane, but now we know together. This is where the magic happens. You can arrange all of your MIDI clips and audio clips and samples and stuff to create a song comparative to stereo to heaven. Ableton is your oyster. Anyway, these horizontal lanes are tracks. There's two types of tracks. There's audio tracks for imported sounds or audio tracks in general. And there's the MIDI tracks for virtual instruments. Think of them like layers in a cake, a really loud electronic music cake. Down here there's more tracks and they are called the scent buses, but we'll talk about them in a later video. The last one down here is the master lane, and that's where all of your audio goes to. That's like where you do the final mixing and mastering and stuff. Now on the track themselves, you can turn on or off the tracks with this button. You can solo that track if you only want to hear this track. You can press the red button if you want to record something on this track. And with the button with a C on it, you can pan your sounds to the left or to the right. And don't worry about the other things yet. All the way down here, you have two tabs. They're important. The first one is the device view and the second one is the clip view. To switch between these two views of device and clip view, you can use the shift tab. Let's break down the different tabs here. First off, clip view. This will change depending on if you have a MIDI clip or you have an audio clip selected. 
If you have an audio clip selected like I have here, you can use it to warp your audio or if make it fit the project's tempo. You can reverse it, stretch it, or use it to make this uh, crazy weird stuttering effect. Now if you have a MIDI clip selected, you can tweak and draw and delete your MIDI notes. It's like playing God, but with synths. There's a lot over here and you shouldn't bother with a lot of it right now. Just um, let's, let's run down the basics. The main thing is you can draw MIDI notes. Press B on your keyboard to toggle on and off the draw function. To the left here is the piano and you can see the scale you selected over the top bar. If you want to see only the scale, you can choose it here. Down here on this lane, you control velocity on the notes you have drawn. Velocity meaning how hard or how soft the notes you have drawn are being played. And that's the basics for me at least. 90% of my music is only made with those things in mind. Now the other view is device view. This is where you can see the MIDI instrument or all the effects you have added to that track you have selected. You can edit the effects or you can turn them on and off. Remember, shift tab to flip through these two tabs. Burn it into your brain like your favorite uh, GTA San Andreas uh, cheat code on, on PlayStation 2. Now Ableton has this function that sets it apart from the other DAWs quite a bit. And that's the session view you see here. Session view and arrangement view is like Ableton split personalities. See, Ableton is called Ableton Live and it's called that because originally it was made for live performances. So session view is made for live performances or jamming. It's like you start this loop and you have these grids. You can put audio clips and MIDI clips in. You can trigger these clips in real time and you can DJ them in real time. Whereas in arrangement view here, there's a timeline and there's a start and an end to your track. If you want to do live performances at parties and concerts, you should use session view and become really good at that. And if you want to create a song from start to finish, you should use arrangement view. I personally never really use session view because I'm a composer and I don't do live performances. But I do know that it can be a great jamming tool for creating beats and stuff like that. But I won't go into detail regarding it. I actually most use this session view for mixing because you have the tracks laid out like a mixing board. You can use this tab to switch between these two views. Now let's make sure you can navigate through Ableton like a pro and don't have to hassle a lot with it. First off, zooming. You have this big bar up here where you can choose a specific point on your timeline and drag it down or up and it zooms and you can pan around. Uh, I wouldn't use that. Instead just make it a habit to hold control and use your scroll button to zoom in and out on specific points. If you want to pan around in your project, you can use and hold the middle mouse button or you can use a trackpad. I don't think you should go totally overboard with a lot of shortcuts, even though they're great to have. But I think these four are pretty good to learn. There's Ctrl E for splitting clips where you have selected. There's Ctrl D for duplicating what you have selected. Ctrl T for a new audio track. And Ctrl Shift T for a new MIDI track. That's it. Finally, you made your track. Let's set it free. Start off by selecting in the timeline which parts you want to export. And remember to leave enough room for reverb tails. To export now, hit Command Shift R or Control Shift R, or you can click File and Export. The export menu pops out and there's a lot of options, but you should just focus on these settings and just use mine. Don't, don't worry too much about the technicalities of this. Always from start to finish when you're recording and when you're doing the project from the start, you should have the 48,000 sample rate selected. Use a bit depth of 24 and have triangular selected here. Once you got it, hit Export and that's it officially your first Ableton track in the wild. You've just conquered Ableton's layout like a pro. In part two, we'll look at some different things, like automation, send buses, and MIDI editing. You shouldn't miss it, or maybe you'll be stuck making loops forever. Hit like, subscribe, help me out, and tell me in the comments if this helped you and what you want me to cover next. Click this playlist. This playlist is good and it's about audio effects, and maybe you'll learn something about how to use these audio effects very efficiently and fast. They're to the point. You should click them. You should help me out and you should click them. Please help.